And we're back. Kevin Trudeau at KTRadioNetwork.com, broadcasting all around the world. The Kevin Trudeau th- Show, thanks for joining us. Everything they don't want you to know about. With a great guest today, David Ike, calling in from the U.K., the world's foremost authority on kind of the the hidden new world order, the hidden powers behind the behind the scenes. He probably is the most well-integrated uh, knowledgeable person in this in this field, author of many many books. His website is davidike. dot com. That's I C K E. If you're a member of the K T Insider Email Club, you're going to get all of his website sent to you this week at uh, K T Radio Network. dot com. David, explain to me how again all this coordinates and how how easy it is for it to happen, and and more importantly, what's the real downside? How are, are the average American or the average guy in the streets going to be ad- adversely affected by a one-world currency or one-world government? Well, the, the, the structure they've created is real simple. If people think of a transnational corporation, it has a headquarters, and it has subsidiary com- companies in each country which answer to the headquarters. What this network has created is the equivalent of that, only they're secret societies. You have the headquarters, the center of the web, what I call the spider, at operational level anyway, in Europe, in places like London, Rome, uh, Paris, Berlin, that kind of uh, area of Europe, Western Europe. Uh, this is for historical reasons. And I'm not talking about the governments of those countries. I'm talking about the, the secret society um, web, the center of it, at operational level. In every country in the world, especially places like America, the ones that really um, make a difference to global society, they have their subsidiary company uh, equivalent. And that's a network of secret societies and semi-secret organizations and the family bloodlines that sit on top of that. They have the job in each country of controlling and manipulating their country's uh, politics, business, banking, medicine, pharmaceuticals, uh, the, the major corporations, the military, media at ownership level, etc. And their job is to uh, impose the centrally dictated policy from the spider in Europe on their sphere of influence, their country. And through this process, and, and this is not made up, as said earlier, in a, in a few years hence, this is, this is decades uh, in, the, in the planning at least, um, and, and so as I've traveled around the world, I've seen the same things being introduced in the countries around the same time, justified by the same excuses. And often the legislation has been virtually word for word. And this is how it's done. And this spider's web goes into um, the pharmaceutical industry. It also goes into the World Health Organization. It also goes into the Centers for Disease Control. It also goes into the American Medical Association, the British Medical Association. So through the web, anyone that controls the web, i.e. the spider, can dictate policy in a coordinated way through all these apparently unconnected organizations. So you can have control of the pharmaceutical companies and control of the government organizations that are supposed to regulate the pharmaceutical companies. So the regulators and the uh, companies themselves are working as one unit at the highest level. And so what we're seeing now, uh, Kevin, with this uh, whole swine flu scam is the World Health Organization fundamentally connected to and working with as one unit the um, pharmaceutical industry, Baxter International and all these others, who um, are behind the, uh, first of all, the, uh, the creation of swine flu and, and as a, uh, creating the problem and then offering the vaccine. And people must, ha- people must do what they choose. But I would say, please, please don't have the vaccine because this is something that is a setup to get access to the, the, the bodies of enormous numbers of people. And when you have a situation where a patent is applied for before the problem appears, um, when you have um, uh, a situation where the the vast, overwhelming majority of people that get this swine flu, if it's even diagnosed correctly most of the time, um, are are having very mild symptoms, and yet you have this insane, uh, crazy uh, breakneck program on an enormous scale of vaccination, then there's something in the vaccine that they want inside us. 
and uh, I'm going to put a, a major article on my website tomorrow uh, giving all the background to this and there are also videos by other people that are giving the background. It's so important. Don't have the vaccine or let your kids have the vaccine. It, it will be, you'll regret it forever. Exactly. Now, where, where does Russia fall into this? Uh, I mean, remember Gorbachev? I mean, he was involved there with the breakup of the Soviet Union. How does Russia play into this whole world uh, world thing? Well, Gorbachev was a, was a, a front man for the same um, organization. He was kind of, you know, if you think about it, so I'm thinking aloud, he was very much like uh, Russia's Soviet Union's Obama, because uh, you had all this uh, long line of uh, Russian leaders who constantly looked as if they were just coming back from a funeral. And then suddenly you had Gorbachev come along, smiled, oh, and, and Margaret Thatcher said, oh, I can do business with him. And he kind of um, was an Obama-type figure. And what did, what did he do with his uh, smile and his bonhomie? He oversaw the breakup of the Soviet Union. And Obama is in the process of overseeing the breakup of America as uh, we've come to know it, because they want a North American Union and, uh, and then a whole of the America's Union. But first of all, a North American Union, which is North America's version of the European Union. And the more that uh, they crash the dollar, the more they crash the American economy, what they're doing is reducing the resistance of American people to, to allowing that to happen. If they are persuaded, it's the only way for um, everything to be uh, sorted out that they're frightened of and they're experiencing financially, politically, um, whatever. And another thing that's happening, which is connected to this, by the way, is um, like in Europe, they're, they're allowing mass immigration uh, uh, in, in, around the world. Um, and this is um, a situation where they use the people who are coming in and they use the people who are already there. The idea is to um, get as many people from different cultures um, in, in different countries to break up the sense of nationhood. That's what it's about. I mean, I, I think it's great that everyone gets on, uh, uh, comes together and realizes that race and all that stuff is just a, an illusion and a fault line to divide and rule us. But uh, the idea of what's going on is to break down a sense of, of, nation, of nationhood. Because if you have a fierce sense of nationhood, you are, not, you are going to resist having that um, sovereignty taken away and absorbed into these super states that they're planning around the world. Now, do you think the U.S. is going to be broken up like the Soviet Union? Because I, I knew Mikhail very, very well uh, when his wife, Raisa, was still alive. We traveled together throughout Australia for many weeks, spent a lot of time uh, talking through his interpreter. He didn't speak mm -hmm. English very well. And, and, he, and I asked him about the breakup of the Soviet Union, and he just smiled and he said, the United States is going to have the same thing happen. And, and, I, and, I, and I, at the time, and I think it was 99 or 98 when, when him, we were chatting about this, it obviously wasn't even a consideration back then. But it, do you see that occurring? Oh, yes. That's, that's the plan. They want to break the uh, uh, United States up into, into regions within um, a North American and then a whole of the Americas union. Uh, that's the idea. I said earlier they want to bring an end to nation states and break them up into regions. In the, Euro in the European Union, the maps have actually been made up and published in one newspaper in this country, one mainstream newspaper, where they've broken up, um, for instance, the United Kingdom into regions, not um, you know, regions that make any sense, really, just groups of bits of land uh, within the United Kingdom. And they've grouped these regions together with other regions in mainland Europe and Scandinavia. And these regions of the United Kingdom um, are not grouped together as one unit. We call a nation. One part of the United Kingdom is grouped together with um, a region of France. Another part of the United Kingdom is grouped together with a region of Scandinavia. And the idea is quite, is quite simple. It's to break up any unity of response and resistance to the edifice of power that I've been describing, the world government at the top, the super states, European Union, American Union, underneath that, African Union, uh, Asia Pacific Union, then underneath that, they just want regions where they will have no power, no military, n nothing that will allow them to resist the edifice of power above. That's the idea. So oh. America's not going to be any different if we allow it to happen, because oh. that's what they want. All right, hold on one sec. We're going to take a short break. You're listening to Kevin Trudeau, ktradionetwork.com. More with David Icke in just a few moments.